Many modern day Christian creationists, in light of the recent reawakening to the flat earth truth, are set on convincing themselves that the flat earth is nothing more than a deliberate deception created by the evolutionists and atheists to fool gullible Christians into looking stupid in the eyes of science. In 1973, a group of atheists in England met to try to figure out a way to discredit the growing creation science movement. It was harming their plans for a new world order and a one world government. They wanted a way to make Bible believers look stupid to the academic world. They knew they could not match the science for creation against evolution, so they decided on a totally different approach. They would get Christians to teach the earth was flat and fixed in space, not moving. They created a story about a conspiracy where NASA and the U.S. government lied about the moon landing and the round earth. They had plenty of funding, so they began writing letters and articles, starting discussions in various formats and producing books and articles defending the flat earth. Hundreds of well-meaning Bible believers were sucked into this movement. The club still meets to plan ways to keep the movement going and to laugh at the ones who believe it. Now, I made up that whole story, but I think it's probably about what happened, okay? <laughs> <laughs> As Hovind himself just admits, he cannot prove his theory, however, the exact opposite can absolutely be proven. That in fact, the Flat Earth Movement began long before 1973 with the advent of the ridiculous Flat Earth Society, which most people who have researched the topic know to be a complete farce. But in fact, the Flat Earth Movement goes all the way back well into the 19th century and it can be easily demonstrated to be no concoction by people who do not believe in God or the Bible to try and make up some fanciful conspiracy theory. But indeed, these people were genuine believers in God and that this debate was uh, raging within the church in earnest for the decades leading up to the, the mid 20th century with the supposed space race and moon landings and other such fakery. And a friend of mine just sent me the, another amazing link he found a, a website, it's basically a blog here, called christianflatearthministry.org. And they have a, a couple different pages here containing links to an absolute treasure trove of material. All taken from a publication produced in the 1890s, and I believe into the early 1900s, called the Earth Not a Globe Review. And as you can see from this little graphic here, that in fact this wasn't even just not just a geocentric approach. They weren't just going so far as to question Copernican cosmology as, as in the book I shared about a week ago. But this is an absolute, to the core, uh, flat earth publication, a monthly publication. Um, basically, it seems, was published in the, in the wake of the work of uh, men like Robotham. This was uh, published in England and look right here, I've never actually seen this graphic before, but this is a sectional view of the world as a plane. And you can see how they have the north in the center with a small, you know, section of ice around it in the, the Arctic region. And then the, the southern ice wall that goes around the plane. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to come across this. So I know that how many of you out there are going to just be just as ecstatic to, to read through these. There's so much material in here. And it's all based on an absolute literal rendering of the Bible, making so many of the same arguments and so many of the same observations that the modern day uh, Christian flat earth movement is making and realizing and that all these contrived explanations and arguments that... Uh, modern-day Christianity has come up with to try and explain away the plain and simple depiction of a flat stationary earth uh, with the luminaries uh, circuiting above it. This whole, the entire debate that's going on right now with between Christians and, and people right now about, you know, Zetetic astronomy versus um, hypothetical Copernican astronomy and, I mean, it was all, the entire debate is all reflected in here. All the same uh, critiques and arguments and the same responses. Uh, it, it's it's amazing. It's it's I've like I've been reading through some of these articles and it's like I've had these conversations. I've had these debates and they're going on more and more as as more people are are waking up to the deception that's going on. But um, it's just it's just it's incredible. I mean, they got stuff here on on just about every topic, both biblical and 
in the scientific and, and observation side of things. And you, you got stuff on, you know, ref, zetetic refraction, talking about perspective. Um, you know, they've got their the Earth is a plane. They've got diagrams in here and picking apart the the Copernican model from I I'm I'm willing to bet that there's there's questions and points in here that we in the last few years have, have not yet even thought of and i'm really excited to uh, to just comb through this and um you know just talking about faith and science and how i mean it's again it's talking about scientism and it's talking about how this is all this is all connected to evolutionary theory and how you know false renderings of geology coincide with false renderings you know false interpretations of, of astronomy and the perversions of geology and astronomy go hand in hand for the uh, the advent of, of evolutionism which is really the the era of modern day creationism because we focus purely on the the geological fallacies and the, the archaeological fallacies with you know dating the the rock layers and the fossils and things but then we swallow wholesale everything that evolutionists say about the the size and scope of the the, the supposed universe and the stars but it's all right here and uh yeah this this was a real movement these were real genuine spirit-filled christians who believed in their bibles who believed in the veracity of scripture and you know there's all kinds of different articles written by different contributors uh talking about you know recent uh you know astronomical events and observations like uh, moon eclipses and things like this talking about curvature talking about <laughs> Like everything, everything that is going on right now, the whole debate, it's like it already happened over a hundred years ago. And through the course of the 20th century, this was not just by the secular world. I think the secular world is, is actually happy to try and point this out, but it's the church. It's the Christian church that has been loath to admit that the church was ever, you know, questioning science, quote unquote science. And this is just... <laughs> This is just fabulous stuff. Like these people knew how to write. They knew how to they knew how to use language and argue their cases and do it with conviction and with boldness and I'm just I'm almost at a loss for words with how encouraging this find is. You know, the book of Job in connection with science truly so called or divine astronomy. Um, yeah, so it's all totally scripturally based, totally appealing to to true reason and common sense and questioning things and so here is a little excerpt I wanted to read. This one article was one of the first I came across, and it just blew me away. This is <laughs> this is fantastic stuff. It's called Creation versus Salvation, or Illogical Christians. We are often advised by well-meaning Christians who are ignorant of the bearings of our contention to allow the subject of the plain earth to, quote, drop, and to join with them in proclaiming what they are pleased to call the gospel. As we are going to press, we have received another gratuitous piece of advice of the same nature. Our friend writes, You believe the earth is flat and stands still. I may give it a passing notice. I am surprised to find a man of so much intelligence and learning should persist in such notions. Is it not a clear fact that we can determine the approximate size of the globe? And if you go in a straight line or in any direction, you will come to the place from which you started? <laughs> Do we not hear these things now? To this day, this is what people say. And how do you account for the seasons and the difference in the length of the days at different seasons and the tidal motions, etc.? I think you would be better engaged in helping to swell the worldwide cry of the gospel. Don't you think so? How many of you have heard almost verbatim those kinds of uh, responses? So he replies by saying, In answer to the last question, we say decidedly, No, not at the expense of leaving off teaching the plain truth. It is undeniable that the Holy Scriptures teach that the earth is stationary, that it rests on the foundations and pillars, and that it is established so fast that it cannot be moved. We therefore contend that if, as some of our Christian friends would have us believe, the Bible is not true in its material teachings respecting the universe, it is not reliable in its promises of spiritual blessings. But we maintain that the Bible is true, true to fact and to everyday observation, and that the earth does not move. In future numbers, we hope to give good proofs of the earth's immobility for those who need them. But in the meantime, we have a right to ask for some one proof, and we only ask for one, of the earth's supposed terrible motions. It appears stationary. It feels stationary. Then why should we give up the evidence of our God-given senses for the sake of a mere astronomical and unsupported assumption? There is much more behind this question of the shape of the earth than our good-natured but illogical advisors are aware of. And then skipping down a little bit. 
We maintain that if the Bible is not true respecting the material creation, it is not reliable in its promises of salvation, and that it is perfectly useless to preach the gospel of Jesus the Christ to men who have lost their faith in the inspiration or truthfulness of the Word of God. It is moreover a great pity when Christian friends unite with skeptical foes in support of a godless science, falsely called science, which strikes at the very foundation of the truth of the Creator's Word. They incur a grave responsibility in doing so. Let them take heed. In answer to our correspondent's questions, we say, it is not a, quote, clear fact that we can determine the approximate size of the globe. It is not a clear fact that the Earth is a globe at all. Let proof be offered, and again, it is not possible to, quote, go in a straight line in any direction and come back to the place of starting. Any straight line is an impossibility on a spherical surface. But apart from the self-evident fact, no one has ever traveled or voyaged due north or due south and come back to the same place again. The great ice barriers would prevent this. Yet our correspondent thoughtlessly says, in any direction. Men can go round the world in an easterly or westerly direction, but this is also possible on a plane. Hence it is no proof of the Earth's spherity. But our opponents do not seem to be able to discriminate in these things. It is the fault, doubtless, of our system of, quote, education, which crams young minds with other men's ideas instead of teaching them to think for themselves and to think cautiously and accurately. Let us hope that the Earth Review will help at least to raise inquiry and so to teach men to think for themselves, and not to leave all their thinking to professional and interested preachers of science. There is an evident need of such a paper as ours, even apart from its advocacy of the truth of the Bible, if only to awaken candid inquiry. Let us hope that all lovers of truth, natural truth or spiritual, and all lovers of original ideas possessing true freedom of thought will rally around us and help us on towards a worldwide circulation of the Earth Review. In 1973, a group of atheists in England met to try to figure out a way to discredit the growing creation science movement. It was harming their plans for a new world order and a one world government. They wanted a way to make Bible believers look stupid to the academic world. They knew they could not match the science for creation formats and producing books and articles defending the flat earth. Hundreds of well-meaning Bible believers were sucked into this movement. The club still meets to plan ways to keep the movement going and to laugh at the ones who believe it. Now, I made up that whole story, but I think it's probably about what happened, okay? <laughs> Many modern-day Christian creationists, in light of the recent reawakening to the Flat Earth truth, are set on convincing themselves that the Flat Earth is nothing more than a deliberate deception created by the evolutionists and atheists to fool gullible Christians into looking stupid in the eyes of science. ...against evolution, so they decided on a totally different approach. They would get Christians to teach the Earth was flat and fixed in space, not moving. They created a story about a conspiracy where NASA and the U.S. government lied about the moon landing and the round Earth. They had plenty of funding, so they began writing letters and articles, starting discussions in various...